All right, we're back. Lane County Hot Shots right here with Coach D. Wright. And we're going to talk just not a little bit about um, Coach D. If you can go back to the last two segments, you'll get to find out everything about Coach D, where he's been, history about Coach D. We want to hit on a couple of topics tonight about um, the total student athlete because I believe sometimes as parents, we forget to allow the athlete to be a student. Yes. And we forgot we forget the student to just be young mm -hmm. and just to live, so. you know. And we become so driven with sports to the point we forget that they're still they're yes. still you know their babies. body yeah, they're still babies and their body is still trying to acclimate and trying to do mm -hmm. a little bit. And even as a parent, I think sometimes, even as a parent, <coughs> sometimes. We want to give so much to our kids that we didn't have. Yes. And we want to give it to them and just say, don't make the same mistakes I made. Do this right. And we try to make every decision for them. In essence, mm -hmm. we forget the person that we've become. We became that person because our parents probably did allow us to make some of those yes. decisions. So I want to just take out some time to come from the parent side and then take out the time to come from the female side. Yes. <laughs> and, and and talk about because you coach you started out with girl teams. Yes. And and to help those girls who are out there and they're and, and you know what they you balling. Let me just stop. Let me just pause. Time out, fifty. Let me Ooh, talk, just time man, out. they balled this year. You are balling, and you are doing an excellent job. And all kudos to you. But it doesn't negate the fact that sometimes you wake up and you're saying, I don't want a ball today. Mm -hmm. I think I'm cool. I just want to be a girl. <laughs> I just want to go to a movie and hang with some other girls. I want to get a Slurpee. <laughs> I don't want to look at another meal. I don't want to look at another nutritional value. I can care less about all that. And I get it. Been there, done that, got a t-shirt. And tonight, we just want to, we just want to probably uh, help you with a few strategies on how to balance that okay because even parents we got to balance life we got to balance work we got to balance children we got to balance but you know what even as early teens you still need balance in your life as well and and that's so important that's me being having two girls of my own that play on my team I'm, <laughs> they, they catch it oh they my do. goodness they catch it and my wife again she has to reel me in say daddy let, let them be girls yeah. Let, let them be girls and, and not just bat, don't just drill them all the time with basketball. And I do my best when we come home, mm -hmm. they try to be no sport. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I mm -hmm. catch myself into it. Mm -hmm. And that's the side I'm so, I am so blessed and so happy that you're able to come on and, and not just for our guys, but yeah, you, you're, you're, and I don't want to leave our young absolutely. men behind absolutely. because we're just no. starting this yeah, year. Absolutely. But our girls, over the past couple years that I've been coaching, mm -hmm. you know, they, they deal with a lot. Mm -hmm. They're going through a lot of, you know, as they get older, body change, yep, peer image, pressure. Yep, peer image. pressure, mm -hmm. social media, bullying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm so glad, being an ex-athlete, mm -hmm. that you know about these things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're able to come over and talk to them. Mm -hmm. And not just talk to them, mm -hmm. but be that one-on-one -on -one coach for their parents. Mm -hmm. Help them with nutrition. Because you know, as you get older, you know certain sports, you have to be able to balance things and, and balance... I mean, it's, it's just Absolutely. that's just where the world is going. Absolutely. And I'm so happy that you're able to come over and talk to our young ladies, also our young men, mm -hmm. especially but our, our young ladies who's going to deal with, you know, as they get older, boy, boys, mm -hmm. how to deal with boy peer pressure, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I was a boy, mm -hmm. I, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and young men's going to tell a young female anything yep. they want to hear, yep. and you'll, you'll be able to, the, to relate to that side and how to keep them focused. Yes, so that's yes. why I'm so happy and so yes. blessed that you're able to come on and help our young ladies yes. and our young men to deal with that side of life. Like you say, sometimes just just be a kid. Yeah. And and I admit myself, like I said, my kids, I put that pressure on them. And sometimes parents, we just want to we want them to we want them to be in the NBA right. or, 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 or or WNBA right now. Right. It's like right now you're, you're going tomorrow. Like, right. No, no, right. no. We just. We just want to take it one practice exactly, at a time. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I think sometimes um, I was thinking about a couple weeks ago. I said, you know what? What happened to parents who do have athletes where we just say, I want you to be, I want you to be respectful <coughs> on every shape, form, or fashion. So if you end up playing locally 
If you if you graduate from high school and you go to college and you may want to go to college overseas, can you still play over there and be respectful? That's the sportsmanship side mm -hmm. of everything. But the strategies that I want to continue to teach, um, continue to teach our youth is a called it's called the B poise method. And the B poise method, the first thing, that's something we're going to discuss um, on Monday. But as I continue to come back, we'll continue to break those very elements down so then they don't know how to implement them. But P is for position yourself for greatness. And when you begin to position yourself for greatness, you are, you are looking at every arena as a student athlete. How can I position myself? One, I'm on the Lane County Hot Shots team. That's great. But two, how am I thriving in school? Three, how's my relationship between my parents? And in this season, this generation, mm -hmm. we have so many students who are not at home with parents. You're with foster parents. You're with aunties. And, you, and, and that can be a barrier too. So we will like to bring in the parents, the aunties, the guardians, or whoever, just to show you how to streamline that barrier. So then it takes the pressure off of them of just not being a student athlete, mm -hmm. but now I got to come home and I got to deal with this, not being a part, not being accepted. So we'll deal with that, but then we'll deal with, oh, which is observant. You have to observe everything around okay. you. Okay. When as a student athlete, when you begin to observe, you observe your friends. Everybody ain't for you. <laughs> you observe the people who come to you and say, girl, you cute. Girl, you need to be my boo. He ain't for you. <laughs> Because if he was so to the point that he wants to, he wants to he wants to court you, that's what we used to say back in the day. They don't know nothing about courting now, you know. But if he wants to date you, those individuals will be for your future. They don't. They they wouldn't want to be. They would not want to interrupt anything possible that will hinder you from being great. So when you begin to observe and look at those haters, or look at those hidden haters, and then look at those associates who say. Hey, she's good, but she ain't that good. You just disconnect. I call it a walk away and be okay. Because mm -hmm. when you can walk away and be okay, now all that energy I was giving into that relationship, mm -hmm. I put it into basketball. All that energy, I put it into my schooling. All that energy, I put it into me as far as self-development. And then I is irreplaceable. You got to be irreplaceable. You got to mm -hmm. be so good that they can't ignore you. You gotta be so good that even the people on the team, they can't ignore you, but they can't hate on your game because it's so good. Awesome. You see what I'm saying? Because sometimes you got some good haters out there, but they like, dog, check this out. I'm hating, but his game's so tight, I just like him. Yeah. I just like her. Yeah. And his attitude is so king, I like him. He has such sportsmanship. He's helping people up and down the court. I like him. So your attitude has to line up with your commitment. Mm -hmm. And your commitment has to line up with your courtship, your sportsmanship, who you are completely. S is to set yourself apart. When you set yourself apart, it's for you to recognize, I just need some downtime. And that's okay. Because everybody does. Yes. You know, Saturday mornings, I remember Daryl, Saturday mornings, Coach Wright, I used to want to go out and play basketball. My mom was, my mom was a cheerleader. <laughs> what? My mom was a cheerleader. When I tell you, and you then she... You wait I see she, her again. You wait till I see her again. Show me one of them cheer, show me one of them cheer moves, mother. Show me one of them cheer she moves. She was a cheerleader. Then she wanted them dancing cheerleaders with, with the oh, showtime hat on. Oh, you. So, you know, for her to deal with, uh, we were, all the rest of us was ballers, you know. So, she's like, I used to trip for the ballers. So, on Saturdays, we want to go out and we want to, you know, get out there. And, we, and she's like, uh-uh. Y'all got to clean your room. Y'all got to do this. Y'all got to do that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's practice time. And she used to hold us back from games to let us know it's not as important as your character, mm -hmm. as your integrity, as this. And we like, Mom, but we're in a tournament today. She's like, I can care less. Tell your coach to call me. Are you kidding me? She's going to watch it and be like, I don't believe you told us. I told the story. And you know what's funny? Hindsight was 2020 as athletes. On those days, and it was only one good time that she did that, and we had to understand because after that, we never missed a time of cleaning our room, mm -hmm. washing dishes, doing our chores. We sat down and we started watching the best teams on television. It was Final Four. So we was watching Duke. Mm. We was watching um, um, uh, Mississippi. We was watching some of the top people. And so now, after we finished cleaning our room, we forgot about our own game. We was like, well, since we can't go, we might as well watch somebody else. And what am I saying? I'm saying when you begin to set yourself apart, you begin to tap into your own personal development to the point you don't stop developing. 
Even if we didn't have a ball in our hand, we was watching Mental something. reps. We had mental reps. And it was oh, to the so point, funny. even when I went to sleep, I would be faking, <laughs> faking in my sleep because I was playing a game. And my mom was like, are you twitching? Are you dyslexic? You got Tourette's syndrome? But I was like, no, I was playing a game and I was trying to fake. So in the end, always work on you. Always, always, will always work on you. E, you got to be excellent in everything that you do. And when I say everything, I'm not adding more pressure. But what I'm saying is slow down and perfect every rep. Mm. Don't rush into everything. And the, everything weird. you do on the court, you do at home. <laughs> everything you repeat on the court, you do at home. Mm. Hey, if I had to, how many, how many fakes did you know? You tell no fake, fake. After a while, you go home, your head just dark, fake, you're just just faking the people. Just hey, what's up? You're faking. But then when you come over, you're at home. <laughs> Mom tell you go outside, cut those hedges, and you just like, Jesus, I don't know how to cut. Hedges may be terrible the first couple <laughs> times you did it, but after the fifth or sixth time, mm -hmm. you'd be the best hedges in the community. So the reason why I'm saying that, because as parents, we forget to implement that part. And I told my own kids that because I said, hey, one year, one day, you're going to graduate, and you're going to have your own place. You're not going to know how to wash dishes. Mm. You're not going to know how to do your own bills. My job is to help you bring balance across the board. So then you'll know what I did on the court built my character. Mm -hmm. It built my sportsmanship. It built who I was. It built how I respond. Every action doesn't call a response. Ooh, I like that. So just because someone may come at you and may try to get you to respond, the best thing you need to do is probably just walk away and be like, that ain't worth me responding. Mm -hmm. And I'm good with that. I think Martin Luther King said it best. He said, um, I'll respond if you call my name. But if you call me outside of my name, why would I respond mm. to that? Especially in today's time, we're dealing yeah, with right. bullying and we're dealing with people who are very disrespectful. And we have a lot of kids who focus on that very one thing that the bully said. Yep. And then they come home and they dwell on it. They dwell on it. And as parents, we don't know how to bridge the gap of communication and say, hey, what was actually said? Were they were the student athlete trust parent? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes as parents, we could turn to helicopter parents. I was one. We'll go on to that later. <laughs> I was one because my child was being bullied. But in the end, my child had to trust me enough to say, Mom, this is what happened, and I can handle it. And I had to be parent enough to step in my corner <laughs> and pray. Because, you know, parents, you touch our kid, we're going to oh, touch man. you. You're to catch these hands, right? Basically. So, <laughs> so I had to step in my corner, <laughs> and I had to give him the power mm -hmm. that he thought he had to handle it. But I put a cap on it, and I said, I'll give you 24 hours. And I said quietly, because I said, this empowers him. So as parents, we need to find out what would empower our athletes mm. in the things that's off the court. Awesome. Because if it's off the court, then I know when you get on the court, I know you can handle it. Yes. But it's the things that's off the court that's driving a lot of unhappiness. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, D is to be driven. Is to be determined. And the reason why I say driven, I don't want to motivate you. I don't want to motivate you. Because anybody can motivate you. Anybody can. But if I can teach you how to be driven, that means you will drive through anything, any barrier that's standing in your way. Mm -hmm. Motivation, you'll sit there and say, oh, I'm not motivated to, to handle that barrier. But when you become driven, it's a thirst. Awesome. It's a hunger. It's a drive that makes you say, I said I can have this MVP McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to get it. And I'm gonna get it hook or by crook, which means I'm gonna I'm gonna do how many reps? I'm gonna run how many sprints? I'm gonna get how many A's? I'm gonna make sure that I'm just not at school, but I'm participating in school. And even for those who are being bullied, hey, I know so and so being bullied. I'm gonna hang out with her today awesome. and see if the bully <laughs> come to her while I'm hanging out with her. See, those are the kind of kids we like to raise up mm -hmm. because now I just became a protector. And if I become a protector, now everything that's in my core, I'm raising up a team, which means I'm contagious of my power. Yes. And the one who's being bullied, now they're going to be empowered to say, whoa, if she can do it, then I can do it. I may not can play basketball, but I'm going to try to play. Why? Because she just protected me. Yes. And sometimes as a sport, and you help me, Coach Wright, growing up, it was the sports that kept us out of trouble. Oh, very much so. It, it definitely it kept, kept me out us of off the streets. But oh, shoot, 
And now we have these wonderful gadgets <laughs> to the point you don't have to take them to the streets. The streets will come to you. And as a parent, we'll teach you this too, how to shut this down and how to show our athletes and our students, our youth, that this really ain't as important. Okay, I've had many teens to just put their phone away and just say, okay, no, I think I'm done. And they'll go and shut down their whole show, social media because in our conversations, our group conversations we would have, mm -hmm. we, would, we, would, we would give them the essence of who they really are. And if anyone's coming against their code of ethics mm -hmm. of who they really are, you shut it down. And I've had many students to say, nope, I just shut down my social media because they tried to tell me who I wasn't. You know, something's funny that you say that. Just think about it. When there wasn't really cell phones, wasn't really out, right? You had to remember <laughs> all the phone numbers. And so if you had to remember something, you didn't have that many phones. I, right. mean, I mean, your circle was very small. Was very small. It was very, if you had to remember 10, point. try to remember 10 phone numbers, it's hard. Yeah, because that's too many phone numbers to try to remember. Absolutely. Now you can get 100, thousand phone numbers mm -hmm. in there, a thousand mm -hmm. friends, like on Facebook. I got a thousand friends. You like mm. which, which one is your real? Yeah, name? basically, which 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 <laughs> <laughs> pretty much it. You know, like my kids, they don't have social media, yeah. uh, Facebook page right now because there's no need for it. Right. Because there's just too much going Absolutely. on out there. They have a little Snapchat stuff and all mm. that, but I, I monitor those good. as well. Good. I but let me see your phone. Good. I'm looking at pictures and everything, yeah, and I think more parents need to do that. And I'm like, well, it's my fault. I pay the bills. It's it my is. room. I pay the mortgage <laughs> or the rent. <laughs> I can go and come as I please. I can Absolutely. look through all. I don't care if you're a senior in high school. Absolutely. I can look through all this. Absolutely. And we do that. The more we let our kids know, look, I love I love you enough to be all in your yes. business. I love you enough. I want to know yes. who your friends are. Absolutely. Because I want to be a part of your life. I want to empower you. Absolutely. But I want to be a part of your Absolutely. life through every process that you go through. But you know what? Think about what you just said. Years ago when we was growing up, our parents knew all our friends. Yes. You know why? Because we were all walking around the community. That, that's how we got a yes. lot of exercise. Right. If, you bikes playing, walking. If, if, if you weren't playing basketball on the weekends, you didn't have no bikes, we didn't have no bikes. So you walked everywhere. You walked to the store, you walked down you walked down the street mm -hmm. to so-and-so's house. I had a friend named Monique. We I used to walk over to Monique's house. I walked to Shannon's house. We walked, then we all come together, about three of us. Then we walk over to so-and-so's house. But my mom, my Dad, they knew everybody. Now, we don't know a lot of people. You're right. And what's so unfortunate about that, even as parents, sometimes we 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 excuse that as being okay that I don't know who your friends are. And that's how a lot of people are. A lot of children are coming up missing. Hey, they were hanging out with so and so. Well, who is so and so? Yes. Oh, well, she met her on social media, and that's a whole social media campaign that we can even talk about later. But just to just to snag on that as parents, we have to continue to monitor if 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 our student athletes are going to be core student athletes are going to be the total. Let's start start talking about the mm. total student athlete. The total student athlete. There's still some monitoring on our end to let them know I'm still the parent. And what D. Wright was just saying, Coach Wright, I love you enough to be involved in every aspect of your life. To let you know I am my it's my job to make sure that you don't bump your head like I did. Or better yet, I need to protect you from all the ghouls that's out here that yes. you don't know, that's, that's camouflaging themselves yes. as kids. Man. And next thing you know, you get caught up into something that you can't get yourself out of that you don't want to talk to parents yes. about. But we want to make sure even now, as a youth coach, life coach, transformational coach, I partner with mental health therapists. I partner with individual family therapists. But we come together collaboratively so that we can begin. We, we can build a component for parents, for teens, for youth, for young adults. We're mm -hmm. over at the University of Oregon <coughs> to assist them, just not in the communicating aspect, but to let them know you have a support group right at home. And that support group, we will fight tooth and nail yes. of anything that come against you and come against your core and come against your destiny. And sometimes it's for the team to know, no, they love me enough to fight for me. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of teams right now, they come against that because they haven't, they haven't seen that kind of love growing up. Or better yet, I will take it back. They've seen certain love from certain friends that didn't portray as love. And they thought it was love. So when they come on our end and we're fighting for them, they're saying, but you're coming against it. You know, you want to take my phone. You want yes. to do this. And you want to do that. And we're like, no, no, no. 
if, if, if I can, do you remember the movie? What's the movie? Back into the Future. Remember Back to mm -hmm. the Future? Yeah, they had a whole bunch of... Uh, yes. I'm, yes, da I'm dating yes. myself now. <laughs> but if you go to Back to the Future, <coughs> Back to the Future, they went into the future just to bring back information and to say, hey, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't make that decision. Hey, don't do that. You know what? As teens, our, our your parents <laughs> <laughs> are back to the future. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> they came right now where you're in their position, you're in their habitation where they can say, Hey, I did that already. It mm -hmm. didn't it didn't work out for me. So I'm here to let you know, don't make that left turn right there. Hey, I'm here to let you know I dated a guy like that and it didn't turn out for me. So I'm trying to let you know, don't date him because it didn't work out. Or better yet, hey, we didn't have phones back then. But these ghouls that's out here on the phone, mm -hmm. they live right down the street from me. And I got to meet them face to face. Yes. Hey, don't go down the street. And nowadays they can't. I mean, to be honest with you, even as a parent, I don't trust my kid to go over everybody's house, which is so unfortunate now. I don't trust mine outside by themselves. But you, do you hear they, me? They have the basketball. I have to go outside Absolutely. with them. Absolutely. I'll sit outside because I don't trust. You see people I snatching agree. people, kids left and right. Right here. Right. And sometimes they're right next to yep, them. Yeah, right next to them. Them. Yep. Yep. So in the end, we're protectors, okay? And we want to let you know we're protectors. But now, I want to come back to Lane County Hot Shots. You just don't have uh, MVP, All-American, McDonald's, U of O, NFL, right here. You have a coach, you have a father, you have a brother, you have a son. You have someone who's compassionate enough just mm -hmm. not to bring in your child and to coach them, but to bring in your child and still be a father to them. Because I've sat in the stands, and sitting in the stands is funny because sometimes I sit and I say, wow, he talks to them just like he talks to his own kids. Mm -hmm. And you know what? As coaches, I commend that. I commend that highly because the girls that I used to have on my team, the parents knew <coughs> if I can snatch up my own kid, I will snatch all of them up. Mm -hmm. And if one, do if, if my kid called me from school and said, hey, mom, I'm being bullied, there's another parent. I said, listen, any of you, if you have bullying issues at school, tell your mama to call me. <laughs> I will promise you I will get yes. off work. And you know what's funny? I had parents that say, hey, I'm in Portland. I can't get to my child. They're being bullied. I was like, where's the school at? I'm on my way. Call them and tell them the KIM mm -hmm. is coming. And I will walk straight in the door and say, where they at? See, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crazy. Because I cater after our teams because I know the life that you can live. But if you don't allow people mm -hmm. to come in and help you coach, it takes a village to raise a oh, kid. Say it. And we have to go right back to that village. And nowadays, the kids don't have a village. And we hate to say the village has to be detention or has to be juvenile, has to be jail. But you know what? If you keep bumping your head, you're going to end up in a place that there's no point of return. Yes. Mm -hmm. But right now, you have Lane County Hot Shots. You have a community that's there to support. And I'm excited about that. Um, and you know what? I know we went everywhere <laughs> we did. today, which is awesome. And I think I think we we've answered some questions for some parents. We've answered some questions for some coaches, um, and we've answered some questions for some student athletes, especially for some of the ladies. Uh, I want to invite you for tomorrow. We're going to be at Lane County Hot Shots Springfield High School yep. Gym at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be one of the keynote speakers on tomorrow. I'm only going to hold you for a little bit, but I want to empower you. And I want to empower you before you get to school. I want to empower you before you continue on in your summer. But just to let you know, again, your DNA, it rides greatness. There's nothing in you that can fail. And I hate to say this, but it's so true. As an ex-athlete growing up, our biggest enemy is us. Mm. Our mm. biggest limitation is us. And you know why? It's because of what we've seen and the things that we've heard. If I can come against all of that tonight to let you know, you know what? Whatever has been said against you, whatever has been told on you, and, and whoever was opposed to you being who you are and saying mm -hmm. that you can't play this game, saying that you can't do this. And sometimes people are intimidated by your greatness. So tomorrow, I want you to meet us 6 p.m. at Springfield High School, mm -hmm. and we're gonna just not empower you, but we're gonna we're gonna give you a thirst to be driven for the next of the summer, the next summer, the rest of the summer, but right into the school year. Awesome! Thank our guest.
keynote speaker and our partner, Ms. Kim McGrew. Give it up for it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This is Lane County Hot Shots. We're coming to you again next week right here.